Good morning, everybody. Morning. Hi, everyone. How is everyone? All right. Everyone's doing well? Good. Good seeing everybody. Absolutely. We're really happy to be here today. We're happy for the season we're in, Advent. Yeah, we're in Advent, leading up. And today we're going to continue our series that we've been talking about, uh, just describing who Jesus really is. And last week we talked about the different names of Jesus. We're going to continue some of that today. And uh, the week before that, we talked about Jesus as the God-man. And today we're going to talk about drawing near to Jesus. How do we draw near and why this is such an important time that everybody can draw near to Jesus. Even people that don't even know the Lord yeah. uh, can draw near to him because they're going to hear songs in the malls and all kinds of stuff. So everybody is being drawn near to Jesus. The shepherds drew near. The Thank wise you, men drew near. Mary, when she was expecting Jesus to be coming forth, drew near. And so we can draw near. And the angels. And, every, and the angels. So all of the heavenly hosts. So everybody is drawing near to Jesus right now. So that's what we're going to celebrate today. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to open up with a prayer, and then we're going to have some songs. And then we'll talk about drawing near. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you for today. We bless you. And we thank you for this time that we're going to have with you. And we celebrate your birth by drawing near to you today. And as we go over these different aspects of drawing near, we just pray that you will be glorified, that your name will come forth in power, and that everything that we discuss will cause you to be glorified and for yes. us to be touched by your presence today. And even now, as we enter into worship, be glorified through these songs as we celebrate your birth in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. amen. And Lord, I just ask for um, a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit and fire on all your people, God. I thank you, God, that where there's been uh, even, you know, distraction and uh, just busyness, God, we just release what you said in Luke, that you came to bring good news and peace. So I just thank you, Lord, for releasing your peace and your um, your single focus focusness upon you, Jesus, because you are the author and the finisher of our, our faith. And we thank you, Lord, that we get to love you because you first loved us. So may we have a revelation of your love today, a fresh revelation of your love. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for glorifying Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the King. And uh, I kind of want to build off of that song as we talk today about drawing near to him. Oh, come, let us adore him, which is one of the great Christmas carols that we have. Another one's Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Joy to the World, all these, but oh, come, let us adore him. And I feel like this is a time of the year when we want to adore the Lord and draw near to him. Yes. So let's look at uh, James 4 as our theme verse, and then we're going to talk about this today. James 4. All right. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Amen. So we're going to talk today about the power of drawing near at this time of the year. Uh, there's a lot going on. Everybody's busy. There's loads of distractions and all kinds of things going on. But Jesus wants us to draw near to him. And when he came down from heaven to earth and left heaven to come, he came down so that we could get to know him and draw near to him. And last week we talked about all the different names of who he is. And we talked about one of his names is Jesus the vine. Yeah. And he is our vine. And you know, when the angel appeared to Mary and spoke to her about 
you know, the whole idea of her birthing Jesus. Mary knew she had to heed the word and draw near to the Lord and trust him and trust the Father, even for something that she had never experienced in her life. And for all of us, this is a time where we want to draw near to the Lord, despite all the distractions, the hustle, and the bustle that's going on. So let's take a look at John 15, uh, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Do you want me to go on to the next one? I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So today we're talking about drawing near to the Lord Jesus at this time of the year. Now, one of his names is he is the vine. Now, the father is the vine dresser here in John 15, but Jesus is the vine. And he says, I am the true vine. And Jesus wants you and I to know that we have the ability to abide in him as he has abided in us. So when we receive Jesus into our hearts, he came to abide with us. Aren't you glad? Yes. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. And he came and he drew near to us before we drew near to him. Very near. So he came right into where we were while we were yet sinners. And just like he came into the world at this time of the year, while everything was dark, there was sin everywhere, Jesus came as the true light of the world and a vine to bring life and light into a dark world. Amen. And he did all that so that we could draw near to him. And so today we're going to talk about the responsibility we have to draw near. How many are glad he draw near to us first? Yeah. How many are glad he loved us first? Yeah. And now we can draw near to him. So how do we do that? How do we draw near to him? Well, we know one of the first ways we can get near him is by praising him and worshiping him. Amen. So every day we have the ability to draw near by praising and worshiping him. And remember, at the time that Jesus came into the world, the Bible says the angels showed up. And what did they sing? Say, glory. Glory to God, the most high. Yeah. So there was much singing and they drew near. So one of the first things that we did was have a celebration with singing when Jesus came into the earth. And all of us, the first way we can draw near is to give praise and give thanks to him. And that's how first way we draw near. The second way we draw near is by listening and drawing near to his word. Amen. Every one of us today has been given Jesus Christ as the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. So he came down to where we were and drew near to us. So now we can draw back and near to him. Yeah. And as we do that, we come into this thing, which we call being close to the Lord, abiding in the Lord, living in union with the Lord, loving the Lord, and staying in fellowship with him. Yeah, go ahead. And just to dovetail on, you know, with the word becoming flesh, if you really think about it, how did he really draw near to us in the womb? He knit us in the mother, in our mother's wombs. Yeah. So he was drawing near, I mean, even before the foundation of the world, but then he was drawing near even in the womb. That's how much he loves us. Yeah. It, it's not like we you know, sometimes we think it so linearly, but in the mother's womb, he was drawing near to us at that point, knitting us all together. Yeah. According to Psalm 139. And all Just, through that time, when he's in Mary's womb, per se, you were being loved by him. Yeah. 
Isn't that awesome? And design. And design and all of that. Now, before the foundation of the world, before Jesus even came to the earth, the Bible says in Ephesians that he planned us. He planned our life. And today, I want you to know that he planned you before you were ever born in the natural. But he also knew that before we were born, that we were all going to be born into sin. Yeah. So one of the ways Jesus had to come and draw near to us is he had to be born as a man. He was already fully God, but he had to come and become a man. And he took on a human body. Amen. And when he took on that human body, that human body was to identify with us. And the Bible makes it very clear that he came down from heaven to draw near to us and laid down his life because he loved us. And that body that he was going to be born in had to be perfect and sinless. Amen. So when Mary agreed to be able to receive the word which was given by the angel, that word was the word of the Father, which was an incorruptible seed. And that seed went into Mary's womb. She received it. And because it came from the Father, it was 100%, we know, holy and pure. Amen. And we know that the seed of the Father is what produces the blood in the baby. So Jesus' blood had to be 100% holy and sinless and pure so that he could draw near to us and we could draw near to him. Amen. Amen. So... So today, we're going to talk about, because he drew near to us, now it's our responsibility to draw near to him. The Bible says that he's the vine and we're the branch. Now, what is the branch? The branch is really who we are. Jesus yes. is the life. We're the branch. And when Jesus came into us, we received his vine, his life, and every part of his being was brought into us. Now, when Jesus came in to our spirit and we came alive, at that point, from there on, everything we needed was in Christ in us. Now, everything that we need to get what he put in us is our responsibility to go get it. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk today about how do we go get what he put in us. Amen. Amen. So number one, let's make this very simple. It has to be by choice. Yes. We have to choose to love him because he first loved us. So everything we do is a summation of the choices we make through life. Yes. Choose this day whom you, you will serve. serve. And how many here want to serve Jesus today and serve him and love him? And notice we don't have to do this because we have to. We do this because we get to. It's, it's a great a honor. What an honor it is to choose to love him, to choose to praise him, to choose to worship him to choose to go into his word and to choose to stay in fellowship with him. Now it says in John 15, abide in him as he abides in us. The word abide means to continue or to stay in fellowship. Yeah. All of us have a relationship with Jesus, but it's up to us how much fellowship we want to have Amen. every day. Amen. So how many here want to have fellowship with him Continually, every All day. the time. Amen. All right. So, the Bible says in John 15, let's put that back up again, John 15. I'm, I want to look at one other thing in there. I have, we... I have it open if you need it. Yeah, all right. Can we put that back up, John 15, again? That I just wanted to... 
It's up there. It says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Now, here's the key in verse five. He who abides in me. Right. And I in him bear much fruit. So then he says, for a part and without me, you can do nothing. So if we want to do anything, we have to abide in him. And the word right. abide means fellowship. It means to stay in fellowship. It means to continue. And I want to make a statement to you today that the number one purpose that you were made for was to abide in Christ. Amen. Spend time with him, fellowship with him. Make that more important than any other thing in your life or my life. And that's the number one thing. So that's our first ministry is to draw near yes. by our choice to abide in him. Yes. Every single day. Yes. Without fail. Yes. And anything that distracts us from that or takes us from that will start to absolutely erode his power and his life out of us. Yes. And we don't want that. We want to stay humble open and teachable before the Lord every single day. Because as we do, then we are going to grow and mature and become just like the Lord. Yeah. And if you think about it, you know, there's the vine and the branches. Mm -hmm. The word is the water. So how else are you going to get nutrient? You get the nutrients through the, through the word coming through Yeah. the, the vine into yeah. the branches, the water, the word, and you know, yeah. is in the water, and that's how, and that's how you're nourished. And out of that, then there's the overflow. It, but if you don't minister onto the Lord first, right. then there's nothing to minister onto others. And right. oftentimes, sometimes we get it flipped because of, you know, there are true needs, and 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 uh, uh, you know, most of us really want to love others truly, yeah. wholeheartedly. But our first. And our primary, you know, our ministry is to love the Lord and let him, let him love us so we can love him back. And then everything else is just the water that flows out onto others. Yeah. The wine that flows out onto others, the nutrients, a word in season, yeah. everything else is just, you know, it's an overflow. Yeah. And, and, you know, as we do that, the Bible says, Jesus said, the greatest commandment is love the Lord with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. Yeah. Then we get to the neighbor later and yourself later. Yep. He says, love your neighbor and love yourself, but you love him first because that's where all your strength, all your life comes from him. And, you know, as the branch, we have the privilege of sharing in his life. And we have the privilege of abiding in him. And we have the privilege to honor him and to seek him. Yes. You know, there's a great saying, you know, somebody put out at this time of the year, the wise men still seek him. That's so, good. Yeah. So wise men still seek him. And if you want to be wise and we want to be wise, we have to stay in an attitude and a position of being responsible to seek him continually. Yeah. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may, he may be, be found. found. Seek him. Go for him. And no matter how much you and I want to do in this life, the most important thing we have to do is stay in a posture of seeking and being responsible to continually go after the Lord at all costs, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. We have to carve out time in our daily schedule and move out everything to make sure we're spending time to love him, to pray to him, to listen to him, to study his word, fellowship with him, and enjoy his presence. Yes. And as we do that, then we start to learn his voice and learn how to be intimate and learn how to share his love with others. Because the more we know him and the more we know about him, then everything becomes an outflow. Right. As we draw near to him, his light, his life will dispel darkness all through our soul, 
and out through our bodies. Amen. Our minds, the Bible says, are darkened without his light and life. Yeah. So we have to be very, very careful to still remember, even though we're born again, even though we're saved, even though Jesus is in us, we still can have dark, negative thoughts that will try to distract and hinder us from really drawing near to the Lord. Yeah. And any time our thoughts are not submitted and yielded to the Lord Jesus, that can produce darkness and trouble and even sin. Mm -hmm. And we have to be very, very careful because our minds, apart from God, are very sinful. They're, they're fallen. And they're fallen, and we have to watch that. And that's why we have to have a holy fear of the Lord that we can't trust ourselves. We have to trust in him. You know, we don't even have to think about trusting ourselves. There's nothing in us to trust. You know, you, you hear these songs in the world, trust yourself. I'll tell you, that is so demonic. You can't, don't trust yourself. You have to trust in Lord, the Lord Amen. and him alone. He is the only safe place to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So loving the Lord, let's put, what is love? Love is an act of the will. Love's not just basically a feeling. It's an act of the will. It's, it's to choose. I choose to love you, Lord. And the proof of our love is, is not just that we say it, but we do something about it. We give thanks. We spend time praising him. We spend time in his word. We just don't say we're going to do it, but we obey it and we do it. And if we love the Lord, we will open the Bible. Yeah. We will praise him. Yeah, go ahead, sir. And I wanted to share something. If it, if sometimes that could sound like, how am I going to do this? I have all these responsibilities and yeah. these thoughts, you know, I feel like some of these thoughts can come, come up in our minds. Um, I've learned two things with the Lord. Number one, he will always redeem the time. Yeah. So no matter how much I spend time with him, he will quicken other things yeah. and make them the, fall into place very quickly. Yeah. And then you can hear his voice much more sharply. Yeah. So you're much, uh, so you're much more adept at navigating situations and, and, and hearing his solutions yeah. for those issues. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that in terms of that, because rather than it seem like um, a yoke of burden, we can look at it in light of eternity. Yeah. And when we sow, we're actually sowing into eternity. Yeah. We're not just sowing here, which is wonderful, but we are sowing into eternal, in, yeah. in eternal things. And these things are temporary. It says life is but a vapor. Yeah. So how much more? Should, can we be selling into eternity? And I just want us to keep a heavenly mindset about it right. when the cares and the, the concerns and, you know, it talks about the deceitfulness of riches and um, right. cares of this wor uh, world try to choke out the word in Mark 8 and it's in the parable yeah. of the sower that we need to, to, to pull ourselves back in and say, I am just passing through. This is eternal. And that word, the word Jesus himself is eternal and he is my exceedingly great reward. And my time with him is eternal and can never be taken away. Amen. Anything else can come and go. Yeah. And everything else will come and go. The only thing that will be lasting is what we, how much time we spent with him and what we did with what he gave us to do. And the issue here is when we get to heaven, the Bible says we're going to be in a posture of worship continually, bowing down continually. So the more we praise and worship here, get in his word here and do the things we're supposed to do, then out of that, God will bring even greater presence, yes. anointing, yes. flow, hearing his voice. All of that is produced in our union in our abiding, in our fellowship, and spending time with him. Um, you know, whenever you spend time, ultimately the goal of God for our purpose is to fellowship with him and to become what? His friend. Yes. 
to become his friend. That's yes. his goal. My Lord. You know, everybody has all these plans and purposes, and they're fine. Gifts and talents and everything God gave us are wonderful to carry out. But your first goal and purpose is to fellowship with him. And number two, the, your second goal is to become friends with him. To know him and, to yeah, intimately. Yeah. And the Bible says that when you become his friend, he shares secrets with you. Oh, that's the word I was going to share. Yeah. <laughs> he will share secrets with that's what he spoke his about. friends. I wrote this down. The Greek word for friend in this particular passage means a friend at court. It describes the inner circle around the king. And Come the Bible on. says the friends of the king will be close to him and know his secrets. But they will also be subject to him and eager to obey his commands. Yeah. So anybody that becomes a friend with Jesus becomes a king in his court. Praise Hallelujah. God. He's the king of kings and we're the little kings. Praise God. The Bible says we're kings and priests. Yes. What do priests and kings do? They hang around the king. Yeah. And then the king holds court with them. And while he's holding court with them, he shares secrets with them about what he's about to do that nobody else knows about. Yes. And the Lord wants to share secrets with you that nobody knows about you but him. Yeah. Is that awesome? Yes. And I'm glad he does. And, you know, one of the great things about being a friend of, of the Lord is that he lets us in on secrets, but also revelation knowledge. Yep. When you start to spend time with the Lord, worship the Lord, seek the Lord, and open yourself up, the Holy Spirit comes in to your conversation. Yes. And he starts to speak to you and open scripture to you and reveal things in scripture that you would never see without that loving yes. participation. Yes. Amen. Amen. In um, Psalm 25, I'm going to read it in uh, two translations, the Amplified Classic, the secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship, which is another word for friendship of the Lord, have they who fear, revere, and worship him, and yeah. he will show them his covenant Yeah. and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. Yeah. And in, um, I'm going to read three versions. The Passion Translation, there's a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh, where mm -hmm. they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. Yeah. And in the NLT, the Lord is a friend to those who fear him. He teaches them his covenant. Yeah. Which is what he did with Abraham. So that's all Psalm 25. Psalm 25, verse 14. And I would really... Um, recommend that you meditate on this because the more you realize the revelation of what you know the covenant is everything that jesus purchased yeah and as we draw near as you know you've been talking about drawing near that yeah. he starts to unveil these things in scripture that that are so intricate and so detailed and yet so personalized yeah. to our individual situations and will give you that rhema word in that time of need yeah and he'll reveal that 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 aspect of his covenant, even just particular for you. Amen. And, you know, uh, and we're using all this to connect even with Christmas in a minute. We'll show how this all connects. But the key that we need to understand is that when Christ came to draw near to us, it was all done so we could eventually draw near to him. What great love. Amen. He came from heaven, took on an earth suit body, a human body, so he could live and die for us, as us, be raised from the dead, and then turn right around and send the Holy Spirit to us so that we, in turn, 
just like Mary could receive his favor, his love, and he even put in us the desire to seek him. Yes. So all of that was done as what we would see today at the birth of Jesus out of love so that we could draw near to him. That's the whole purpose that he came the whole for. Purpose. He came so that we could draw near to him. What an incredible, incredible privilege we have. And I also wanted to say that when Jesus chose to come and be born and draw near to us, he did it so that we would know that we can do the same by laying down our life for him. Yeah. He first laid down his life for us. Yeah. But now he says, now you have the privilege and the honor as my branch that you can lay down your life for me. And there's no greater honor. What an honor. And joy. Yeah. And, and you know, as we start to, you know, learn and grow and develop and mature in this, there is such a joy in being able to lay down your life for the Lord. Amen. And to be free of any constraints. Free. Of self. Yeah. Just and, free. And free and, to love, free to lie down. And and he 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 wants us not to be conscious of our failings and our sins. Amen. Even though they're there. But before we focus on them, we need to focus on him first. And you know, I, I love the scriptures. There's there's tons of them. I have them written down here, and I didn't give these all to Kiana, but I'm going to read some of this to you. And I want you to listen to how powerful it is that he created for us to draw near to him. Now listen to this verse. Isaiah 43, 25 and 26. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions. Thank you. For my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Amen. Now, what kind of love is that? So when you come to him, even if there's sin in our life, and we all have had that, even there, he says, when you get to know me and you draw near to me, I will blot that out. Right. And, and. I love how at the end it says when we state our case. So, you know, we go to the Lord. Yeah. Let's say we've sinned and we go to the Lord and we say, Lord, I've sinned. I repent. I'm turning from, you know, my wicked ways. Yeah. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit to please help me to walk this out. Yeah. So I, I don't continue in this and, and I just break this cycle. Yeah. But, but the important thing here is, and I'm not getting into the courts of heaven, but when you state your case, it says that you may be acquitted it's already fixed he's the blood has already done the yeah. work so it's not if you will be acquitted it's you're going to be acquitted yeah that's the powerful thing because he's so for you because if god is for you then who can be against you right. so he wants to acquit it he wants to he wants to just eradicate it with his blood because he sees you as pure and holy yeah so it's already a fixed Right. And see, one of the things the enemy tries to do is to stop us from drawing near when we sin or when we mess up. And we all do. But I wanted to make this clear today because one of the things that we have to be careful of, don't let your sin or my sin or a mistake stop you from drawing near. You draw near because he's righteous, not because you are so good it's because he's good because he's righteous in us we can approach him yes because he made us righteous we don't come on our own standards we come because we've been made righteous in christ amen so that's why we can stay drawing near even if we mess up even if we make a mistake even if we sin yes we should be upset about the sin but let us also know we can approach him because he's righteous 
And we are righteous because of him. Yes. We don't come on our merits. We come on his merits. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And and with that, when we do sin, because there, you know, there is a place where repentance and repentance is joyful, yeah. but run to him. Run as fast as you can. Yeah. You know, just run right into his arms. His arms are open. Amen. And and just go right up to your father and repent. Hallelujah. Having confidence in the blood. Having that confidence in the blood that there that he that that is his will that we are acquitted because yeah. we've already been righteous and holy. Hallelujah. And he's just enforcing the victory. That's right. And then out of that there's a joy and then the freedom and then the peace that comes back, the condemnation leaves, the guilt leaves, the shame leaves. And, and even if it takes a little bit, he'll walk you through the word. Yeah. He'll start talking to you. Yeah. As yeah. a friend, you know, as a friend, like if, if I've if I've sinned against you, I'll come running into your office. Yeah. And I'll say, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That's that's what that's right. And that's, that's what, what friends we, do. Right. That's what you do. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about three things, drawing near, how you draw near, the goal of drawing near is being the friend of God. Then when you are the friend of God, this is how you live continually as a friend. As a friend doesn't mean we're going to be perfect, but when we do mess up, we still have a friend that sticks closer than a brother that doesn't give up on us. So immediately, as you learn the word and you know the word, that your sin consciousness will leave you and you'll become more understanding of who you are as his friend. Now, the Bible says also um, in Isaiah 38, 17, indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness, but you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your, your back. back. All of them, he cast them as our friend. And then uh, I love this. Um, in Psalm 130, uh, this is a great chapter. Yeah. And this is the epitome of abiding and drawing near and being the friend of the Lord. Psalm 130 says, Out of the depths, I have cried to you, O Lord. Yeah. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice, to the voice of my supplications. Notice that David is talking about his voice. Yeah. Hear my voice. Isn't that? Yeah. I cried to you, Lord. Hear my voice. Now, how many know the Lord hears his voice? He's saying it to the Lord as a friend. Yeah. Hear my voice. Let's say that to the Lord today. Lord. Lord. Hear my voice. Hear my voice. As I call upon as you. As I call upon you. As I worship you. As I worship you. As I come to you. As I come to you. Out of the depths of my love. Out of the depths of my love. I cry out to you. I cry out to you, Lord. Because you are my friend. Because you are my friend. I draw near to you. I draw near to you. Because you've drawn near to me. Because you draw near to me. And it said, if you, Lord, I love this verse. Lord ministered this to me one day. I was going through some stuff and he said, go to Psalm 130. I said, woo. See, see when you, when you draw yeah. Near to the Holy Spirit and the Lord. He'll start to talk to you about stuff that you're not even thinking about. <laughs> so I'm it's going so through true. all these struggles and all this stuff, rehearsing some stuff I've done and all this kind of thing. And what could I do better? And right in the middle of that, as I'm talking to the Lord and thinking about him and just spending time, I hear the voice say, go to Psalm 130. Wasn't planning on it, wasn't in my daily routine, wasn't anything I was even thinking of. But out of his love for me, because I chose to abide in him, yes. he spoke to me and said, go to Psalm 130. I don't even remember ever reading Psalms 130, I'll be honest. I've read a lot of the songs, but I've never read Psalm 130 before. <laughs> so I'm over there, okay, like a little kid in a candy shop. All right, let's check this out. And then I started to read this. Out of the depths have I cried to you, O yes. Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Yeah. Then he said, if you, Lord, should keep account 
of and treat us according to our sins. Oh, Lord, who, who could, could stand? stand? Who could stand? Woo! That verse went through me like a shot. Who could stand? Yeah. Then he says, but there is forgiveness with you. Just what man needs, that you may be reverently feared and worshipped. I wait for the Lord, expectantly wait. And in his word, do I hope. I don't want you to read the next three verses, Sarah. I want you to be in that too. I wait for the Lord. I expectantly wait. And in his word, do I hope. I am looking and waiting for the Lord more than the watchman in the morning for the morning. I say more than watchman for the morning. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord, there is mercy and loving kindness. And with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Wow. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. So I read that. That was out of the Amplified. I'm looking and I'm waiting expectantly. Not just waiting. Yeah. But expectantly waiting for his word and for him to speak to me. Yeah. I have a hope. And I have an expectation that he wants to talk to me. Yes. So when you draw near to him as your friend, you can have a hope and an expectation that he wants to speak to you, give a word to you, take it to a scripture. Yeah. If you do your part, don't hope he will. Just say, I know he will. Yeah. And then it starts to be, then as you continue to grow in that, yeah. there's the, the expectation is built in. Yeah. You just, you know, when, if you wake up in the morning, he's there just waiting for you. Yeah. Just eagerly waiting to spend time with you and just wanting to just, you know, talk and walk with you in the cool of the day. Amen. He's just, he's there. He's there. God is with us. Yeah. He is here. He's so there. I had heard a testimony. I don't know if it was on the, from Jesus image or somebody, but they were talking about, I think this, uh, this one woman, this uh, nun who was a minister and doing things and stuff. So anyway, the Lord came to this woman and said to her, would you spend just one day with me? Yeah. So I know you have things to do, but you just spend one day. And he, she said, okay. He said, just put some of your other stuff aside just one day. Mm -hmm. And then she started to spend that day with him. And then while she was with him that day, he just said, would you spend a week with me? Yeah. Said, well, you know, wait, wait, I have, but well, I have responsibilities. I have ministry to do. I have that to do. Mm -hmm. But she said, you know what? If that's what you really want from me. Yeah. All right. I'll put that all aside. I'll spend, uh, I'll spend my week with you. So she starts to spend a week with him. And then all of a sudden he says, uh, would you spend a month with me? I said, well, wait a minute. You know how much I have to do with ministry and all this. She said, but if that's really what you want for me just to spend one month with you, I I'll do that. Yeah. So then she starts spending more and more time with him. Then finally, he says, would you spend a year with me? Just me. <laughs> and then she says, yes. And then, of course, eventually he comes back and says, okay, I just wanted to see if you were willing to do that. Yeah. You could go back to what you were doing. But that is what I really wanted from you first before you did Amen. Caught up in all the other things. Amen. That's powerful, isn't it? Amen. And that's what the really the Lord wants us for first. Amen. Will you spend time with me first before all the other things that you want to do? Amen. It's not that those things are wrong, but nothing can ever take the place of him. Nothing. Nothing. And spending time with him. Nothing. And drawing near to him. Nothing. And abiding him. Nothing. And, you know, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when you fear the Lord, it's not that you're afraid of him. 
It's just that you don't want to not be with him. Yeah. Because of what you might do without him. Yeah. That's what the fear of the Lord is. And you know, when you fear the Lord, you're not a let you're not afraid to let him see anything in your life. Mm -hmm. Because he loves you so much. In fact, he wants to see everything in your life, not to shrink back. Yeah. But come close. And anything that's not right with you, I'll deal with it. Yeah. As a loving father. Yeah. And if something needs to be changed, don't you try to do it. Let me do it. I'll do it through my word, yeah. through my love. And if I have to discipline you or correct you, let me do it my way. Yeah. Because my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yeah. But draw near to me. Yeah. The Bible says the fear of the Lord keeps us clean. Yeah. I hid the word of my heart. So that I may not sin against so you. So that I would not sin against you. So all of us, as we draw near to the Lord, the word and the nearness and the friendship of his love and his word cleanses yeah. as we're there. We're actually being cleansed by the Lord yes. without trying to get cleansed. And I and I would also say, not just cleansed, but in his presence, yeah. we're being healed. We're being delivered. We're being set free without even, no, without, without, even, even without even knowing it. Things just fall off as you just behold him. Hallelujah. It's and it's it's his pleasure, it's his joy. Amen. He's a loving father. He just comes in and with the word just washes you and wipes you. And it's yeah, it's everything. It's everything. It's everything. It's everything. I love this. Um to, you know, there, there's times, and I want to address all these things because they're important. You know, we're in a season now where everybody's in an attitude of, you know, joy and giving, and that's wonderful. But God wants this to be so deep in us. Yeah. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, verse 7 and 8, for a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with deep compassion, I will bring you back. That's the kind of father we have. He's so compassionate. He always wants us to be drawing. Yeah. He's always drawing us back. He's always looking for us. Yeah. His eyes go to and fro, yeah. looking yeah. throughout the earth for those whose hearts yeah. are turned Towards toward me. Him. So today. Find it with us, Lord. We want to draw near. Yeah, it's Christmas time. But the greatest thing you can do at Christmas, the greatest gift you can have is draw near to Jesus. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. That's what I was thinking about yeah. when I came up with the title and, yeah. and we were sharing this together. I was just saying, what's the greatest gift I could give Jesus at Christmas? Yeah. Now, we all know that the... Maggot, the wise men came and they brought the frankincense, the myrrh. But what is the greatest the provision thing? then for the two years? Yeah. That was for the two years. But what's the greatest gift I could give Jesus at Christmas? The greatest gift he gave me was himself. Mm -hmm. But now what gift can I give him? Yes. The greatest gift he brought me is he drew near to me. Yeah. With his love. Now, what gift can I give back to him? Yes. The greatest gift I can give back to him is to draw near to him and love him continually, all the time. Yes. Making time with him, seeking him. And that's what makes me wise. And, you know, the wise men sought him. And I thought to myself, let us us be the wise men now. Yes. And seek him. And with that wisdom, okay. he will redeem the time. I there was, uh, yeah. I felt I've really sensed um, recently, um, an even greater level of consecration and sanctification, which 
you know, typically people do that more in January, you would say. Yeah. But an even greater level of that. And he will, if you allow him, take you into places where you're so you're lost in the spirit. You're yeah. not lost, you're found, but <laughs> but you're you're just there's no time in yeah, the right. spirit. And he will take you into those places. And there's just this, uh, I just feel like this, it's always there, but this uh I guess it's like this special anointing on it right now where he is revealing these secrets, these strategies, these um, assignments, things that we need to go forward. Yeah. And and we don't want to miss the day of his visitation. Amen. He's always here. He's always with us. But there are times where he is drawing us closer. And, and, and I implore you to draw close to him during this time in the midst of all of this yeah. in the midst of all of this, because we are, there's a lot of transition. There's a lot of change. There are a lot of shakings. There's all, we know all of this, but during all of this, he is just like, just like a waterfall. He's just pouring out these secrets, these strategies, yeah. this intimacy, but it all flows out of intimacy. It's not about the strategy first. It's about Jesus yeah. Christ. Yes, that's right. Amen. And that's exactly right. You know, in the presence of the Lord, the Bible says there's fullness of joy. Yeah. But also there's secrets there that only he knows about you and things he wants to re reveal to you about him that nobody else knows. Amen. And, and I want to tell you, he chose you to be his friend. And that's the goal. And I want to, again, again, say this. We as friends, we have to choose to be close to God. It's a choice. Yes. And as we learn to know God better as his friends, and as we get in on his secrets, then you will start to sense things mm -hmm. because you're actually right near him and you're near his throne. Yes. You're right there in the presence, as Sarah said, intimate in his throne room. Doesn't get any better than that. You're in the court of the king. God. You're in his throne room. Thank you, God. And you're a friend in the court. And there you are in the inner circle of his friends. Thank you, God. There's other friends there. And there we are in the court. Think about those elders around the throne. But they didn't start that way. They had to be on earth drawing close to him. Yes. Your friendship starts here and continues for all eternity. Yeah. And the closer you get to him here the closer you'll be with him in eternity. Yes. It's it's very, very true. And I know in my life, and I know Sarah in her life, and I know in your life, we want to be known as the friends of the Lord. Yes. You know, one of the friends of the Lord was Abraham. And remember I just the that. day that Abraham was uh, working out there and all of a sudden the Lord shows up and the Bible says that Abraham was just quietly standing there when the Lord showed up. Yes. And the Bible says, as the friend of God, he just stood there and he communed with the Lord as he talked to him. Yeah. And because he was ready for him. And God wants you and I to be ready uh, when we meet him. Yes. And today, I just want you to know that... Uh, as you become the friend of the Lord, then when you go to obey what he asks you to do, it's much easier to do it. Yes. It's easier to obey God when you're the friend of the Lord and you're loving him because his friends love to obey what he asks them to do. Yes. And and there's something that's very powerful about friendship. Um, you know, in that conversation, in that dialogue, in that discourse, friends can change other friends' minds. We look at that, even in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. You know, as you draw closer and closer to the Lord, you know, in, in, in prayer and in recession, that, that you can bring things up before the Lord yeah. that may be going one way. Yeah. And, and the Lord will hear you because you're so tightly knit with him. Right. And friends have an opportunity. Like if I come to you and I say, you know, uh, I think you should wear a different shirt. Mm -hmm. I I have the you'll you'll listen. 
Yeah. You'll take it into consideration. That's right. And and because, you can change but, your mind. Because I know your motive. Right. An attitude behind that is for betterment. Exactly. It's not because that you don't trust me. It's no, just no, that no. you want something that you think is going to be for my betterment. Yes. And that's what a true friend does. A true friend will always want the better for that other person. Right. And the reason that he wanted it for Sodom and Gomorrah was so the Lord's name would be glorified. That's right. And so he he went back to the Lord with his name and because he wanted the best for the Lord. Yes. And, and he also, because he became friends with the Lord, Abraham, the Lord even allowed him to talk to him that way. Yeah. Because he wanted him to know. When you become my friend, I want you in involved in everything I'm doing. Right. And I want to listen to you. The Lord wants to listen to your voice. Say it. The, the Lord, Lord wants, wants to, to listen, listen to, to your, your voice. voice. The Lord wants to hear you come to him. Yeah. The Lord wants you to enjoy him. Amen. And the Lord wants you to be joyful about obeying anything he asks you to do so as a branch and as a friend we get to share his life we get to bear fruit and as his friend we get to share his love and bear fruit so as a branch we share his life but as a friend we love his life yeah we love him and we share his life hallelujah yes. so when we abide in him and we stay close to him, that means we stay close to the throne. And then we're willing to do anything that he commands us to do because we love him so much. Hallelujah. This is so good, this stuff. I, I love talking about this. So Jesus, remember, came to take on a body to eventually die to lay down his life for us. But Jesus even laid down his life for his enemies because that's the kind of love he has. And so when we become the friend of God, we learn to love like God. Right. And when we learn to love like God, we will live like him. And when we live like him, we will do what he does. And the things that he does, we will do. And the works that he does, we will do because we're abiding in him. Right. First, as a friend, the work doesn't come first. It's the walk with him comes first and the time with him. Yes. The Bible says that he is Emmanuel, God with us. And today, we want to say thank you, Lord, that you are with us, that you are a vine, that you're our friend, and we can love you. Now, before we finish today, I want to just share a couple more points about abiding and living and being a friend and drawing near to the Lord. When we draw near to the Lord and become his friend, he becomes more real to us as savior, healer, king, father, yeah. high priest, counselor, prince of peace, lion of Judah. All of these things become more strong. Yes. In our friendship with him. Yes. The lamb of God. All of that starts to make sense. All the names of God become real to us. Yeah. And part of that goes back to um, Psalm 25, verse 14, because he reveals his covenant. What is his covenant? Yeah. His covenant encompasses all those aspects of his nature, which are encompassed in the name. Right. So it's as we, he, he wants to reveal all those aspects of who he is. Yeah. to us as as we those are aspects of the covenant not it's i mean i love the cross i love the victory in the cross i could i could talk about that all day 
But there is that place of intimacy where you get to see him come in and rush in as the lion of the tribe of Judah. You get to come in and see him as the ram in the thicket. You get to come in and see him in all of the prince of peace in the middle right. of the storm. You get to see him in all of his majesty, in all of his glory, in all of his wonder. And, you know, as we behold him, you know, you, you get to see him seated on the throne the throne of righteousness and justice amen and he wants to reveal those things to to our us to our to us and open up the eyes of our understanding so that we can really see it and have that revelatory knowledge and walk it out amen. and that's part of the secret of the covenant amen so today as we finish right here how many want jesus to be your friend and how many want to be the friend of Jesus? Our Emmanuel. He came near to us so that we could come near to him. And today, during this busy holiday Christmas season, we thought it'd be good to say, let's take a brief time out and let's get back to basics and draw near to him. Amen and give him the greatest gift we could give. He was the greatest gift to us. Let us be the greatest gift to him by giving ourselves to him and drawing near to him. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord praise for today. Hallelujah. And by the way, these are not tears of sadness. They're tears of um, love. Amen. I just want to clarify it. It's <laughs> tears of the presence. Yeah. You know, the presence, is the presence of the Lord. So we're going to pray right now about drawing near. Next week in our Christmas message, we will get into the finality of what I think is going to be important. And Sarah and I will talk about this. But I want to talk about Jesus as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. And then I want to also talk about his name and authority and then we also want to talk about this because it's appropriate that he was the friend of sinners amen and at this time of the year we could be a friend of the sinner <laughs> amen amen so next week we're going to talk about all of that his kingship his lordship his authority and being the friend of the sinner and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Yeah. But let's pray today, Sarah. Why don't you pray over the people that, uh, and you had a prophetic word, maybe you could combine it or however you want to say it. About Just pray for them to be close to the Lord and yeah. uh, for friendship with the Lord and for any blockages to be removed and that they don't have to be afraid of the Lord or afraid of his voice, but they can expect to hear. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We exalt you. We magnify you. Yes, God. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that in your presence there is fullness of joy. And we thank you, Lord, that as you first loved us, that we can love you back, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are, you know, you are the father to the prodigal. You're the father to the elder brother with great compassion that you draw us with cords of love and kindness. We thank you, God, for that. We thank you, God, that you are constantly wooing us, that you've wooed us from our mother's wombs. Yes, God. In ways that are inexplicable and unimaginable, but for you, but for you, God. And so, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that any hardness of heart, any blindness, any deafness, any cares of this wor world, deceitfulness of riches, lusts, any, um, anything else that would try to choke the word. We say no to that and we break it in Jesus name. And we open up our hearts God. and we thank you, Lord, for making our hearts good ground to receive the hundredfold return because you are are the hundredfold as all in all it's the great i am 
We worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I thank you, Lord, that if for any fear, any fear, disappointment, discouragement, loneliness, brokenheartedness, Lord, oh, Holy One, oh, Holy One, where things have seemed like they've gone on for so long. And, and I, I hear the Lord saying, you know, that I hear the Lord responding to the cries of people. But haven't you forgotten me? It's taken so long and the Lord is saying, I haven't forgotten you. And I, we take authority over every hindrance, every obstacle, every delay, every lie from the enemy. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, reveal every lie. We pull down strongholds in the name of Jesus that oppose the mind of Christ, and we bring them into captivity to the mind of Christ. And Lord, I thank you with the mind of Christ that you open up our eyes to see you brightly, to see you as our friend, that we can walk and talk in the cool of the day, in our hearts, the Eden of our hearts. Worthy are you, O God. Worthy are you, O God. And we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. We drive out all distraction, all voices that are not of you. We command them to be silenced in the name of the Lord. As it says in Obadiah, be still in the presence of God. Be still in the presence of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for holy consecration, a holy sanctification with your ease, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, for I will give you rest. The rest you've desired, the peace in your mind, the peace in your body, the shalom, the wholeness, the fullness. I am yours, says the Lord. I am yours and you are mine. And nothing can separate me from your love. So I... Take authority over any cords of entanglement, and I cut them off right now in the name of Jesus. And that the only cord that remains is your cord of loving kindness, the seal of the blood, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your covenant. Reveal to us, Lord, your secrets as you find us your friends. Take us into great depths of friendship. A friend loves at all time, and a brother is born for adversity. And I thank you, God, that you not only call us friends, but you're not ashamed to call us brethren in the middle of it all. And I thank you, God, that just like Abraham, as we come forth, as it says, um, that we are the seed of Abraham, and that Abraham was your friend. And you took him on a journey to reveal yourself to him. Reveal yourself to us, Lord. We want to know you intimately as only lovers do. Bride to bridegroom. Husband to wife. In all your majesty, there's no greater privilege. There's no greater love. Worthy is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. We call you worthy, God. We magnify you in the middle of it all. In the middle of it all. You are still worthy, O oh Lord. Thank you for your blood that made a way where there was no way that we can be in the presence face to face with you, Jesus, and the Father. And Holy Spirit, for your abiding presence, we break every deaf, dumb, and blind spirit that would try to hinder us from hearing your voice. And I release clarity of the voice of the Lord. As Moses said, let all your glory pass before us. We want to see your glory and let your goodness pass before us. We thank you, God, that we can see your goodness in the land of the living. 
And yet at the same time, God, we set our, we set our, we set our mind on things above, not on things of the earth. And in, as it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 7, if there's any area where our own affections have restricted us, we repent of it quickly. And I thank you, Lord, we set those things aside and we set our full affection on you. Jesus Christ, we love you, we worship you, and we adore you. Come and behold him. Come and behold him. Come and behold him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We glorify you. We magnify you. Pour out, pour out, pour out, pour out, pour out. Mm -hmm. The greater measure on your people. As it says in Isaiah 44, pour out your spirit. We know you already have, but in just greater measure that we have the revelation of what you've already done. We worship you. We thank you. Thank you, God. We exalt you. We bless you. It all belongs to you, O oh Lord. Let the earth be filled with the glory of the Lord. And Lord, this week, let your countenance shine upon us. The light of your countenance. Let us radiate with the beauty of your holiness. Oh God, draw people from the north, south, east, and west so we can share the good news. Blessed are the feet that bring the good news, the glad tidings of peace. Holy are you, oh God. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, that we count it a privilege to love you, to bless you, to exalt you, to Thank be you. a friend to you, to spend time with you. Thank you, Lord. To listen to you. And at the same time, being ready to do and obey anything you want us to do as your friends. And we know, Lord, that the greatest gift we've ever received is you. And the greatest gift we can give at Christmas is to be near you. And we thank you that it is an honor and a privilege to be able to be near you. Near you, near your throne, near your word, and be all that you've called us to be and do. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the privilege of being your branch. A branch that can love, a branch that can produce because of you. What a privilege to share your life and be responsible to abide in that life and share it with others. What a privilege, what an honor. So we thank you today for your word. Thank you for the prayers that were prayed by Sarah. And thank you for everybody that came on today and that will listen to this message this week, that they will all return to their first love. Thank you, God. And draw near to you. Starting right now. What a great time. Thank you, Lord. To do that. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen.
<laughs> well, Lord bless you, and we thank you for today. And uh, before we do our giving, uh, I just wanted to say one of the great joys that we have is to be able to give back to the Lord. Yeah. Because he first gave to us. Again, we're talking about all things, the way we draw near. One of the ways we draw near is through our giving. For God so loved the world that he drew near to us by giving his son, that we might have eternal life. And when we give a tithe or an offering in response to his love, we don't do that just to do it. We do it because it's all his anyway. And we obey what he says to do. He said, I gave you what you have so that you could give it. <clears throat> so today when you give your tithe or your offering, give it out of love to your friend and as a friend. And he promises that he will press down, shake together and flow over not only your gift, but bless you to bless others. Amen. And we've been doing that. And so when you go to give, uh, Sarah's going to update you to it, who we gave to last week. But if you want to give, you can give online, you can text to give, but prayerfully really consider giving your best gift. What can you give back to the Lord today for what he's given you? You're not giving so much to unite. You're giving it to the Lord. But when you give it to unite, you're giving it to the Lord because we are an instrument that is used by God to distribute that out to the needs yeah. of humanity. And we're called to bring it into the storehouse. The, yeah. The, so the Bible is the Bible about. says is you should, you know, wherever you get fed, you should bring it into the storehouse. So just pray about what to give today. But I'm asking you to really pray to give a gift back to the Lord because of the gift he gave you. Yeah. So Sarah's going to share with where you started last week. I, before I share that, I would like to share, you know, before Abraham even started to, if you actually walk through Genesis, he he wanted to give up the tithe first. Yeah. And then came all of the promises and the fulfillment yeah. because he wanted to give and honor the Lord first with the tithe to Melchizedek, who was a type of Jesus. Yeah. And that's where he could be found trustworthy. Amen. And he honored him as that priest. And then out of that, we get the, the covenants and the covenants and the covenants and on and on. But I just wanted to share that as we're talking about friendship with yeah. the Lord. Mm -hmm. We go back to, we go back to, I'm sorry, to, we go back to, um, Abraham. you know, Abraham. Genesis at, 15. At Genesis 15. And he brought him the spoils of victory. Amen. First he wasn't passed. He, he did it because it was because in his heart. heart. He did it because it was in his heart. And yeah. that's what friends do. That's what they, friends do. They give from their heart. So uh, I just wanted to share that to tie it all in. And also I want to say too, always remember when you give, it's an act of worship. You are worshiping the Lord when you give an offering. Amen. You know, we don't just sing this worship. We When we give, it's an act of worship. So thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you for your giving. And we just pray that God will bless your giving. Lord, we bless Every person as they give today, let them just experience your love in a special way. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And Sarah's going to share where we uh, gave last week. Yes. And 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 it's actually, um, you know, it does say in Luke 16 that when we're trustworthy with natural riches, that we yeah. can be trusted with spiritual things. And I certainly want to be trusted with spiritual things. That's the right. high level. So anyway, last um, last week, I wanted to remind you guys also that we have been giving, that we gave um, this whole year to uh, Samuel through um, that little boy, um, through Iris, um, because we believe that true religion, as it says in James, is to give to the orphan and the widow. Yeah. And um, so we gave to this little boy, Samuel, and we, um, for the whole, for the whole entire year, we also wanted to um, support um, and, uh, you know, we know that we wanted to support um, 
friends, family in uh, Nashville. So we sewed into Samaritan's Purse um, because as we know, there was an incredible tornado which did a lot of damage and um, they were right there to su provide supplies, emergency needs, food, water. And um, we also sewed into, and we sew into every month, um, Andrew Womack Ministries were part of the army, which is um, essentially Andrew Womack Ministries. It's for um, leaders yeah. that were part of um, their group as well. Yeah, amen. So um, we fully believe in going above and beyond the tithe. Yeah. So we want to be, I, I was in Philadelphia and um, I saw this on the side of the building and it struck me. Um, it just as he who sows bountifully reaps bountifully. Yeah. You know, and yeah, that's a great scripture. And he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So we always want to be sowing. It's more blessed to give than receive. Amen. Somebody said that. I think it might have been Jesus. <laughs> uh, but what a joy. It's a joy to give. So today as we give and you give, let's do it with joy. Let's do it for love. And let's do it because we're drawing near. Yes. And give back to him the gift that he gave us so we can gift back to him. Today. Amen. Jesus, my name. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, Jesus. Amen. Thank well, you thank you all for coming on today. I hope you really enjoyed it. We love you all. It was a great day. Did you all enjoy today? You all want to... Put a thumbs up. Good day. Amen. We love you all. Bless you all. Oh, thank you. Kiana. You know, I just want to give a shout out to Kiana. <laughs> Kiana's amazing. Thank you, Kiana. Prayer meeting. We are going to have a prayer meeting um, this Wednesday at noon. So um, please come on. Um, it'll be powerful. And if you cannot make it, please pray. And please pray every day <laughs> anyway, but please, and please come on. If I you just, can. amen. And I just want to decree a major anointing to flow on that prayer meeting right now. Jesus name. Amen. And for you that are still on, we didn't go yet. We're still here. Hang on. We're not leaving yet. We love you too much. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> we're, we're, we have to have a little bit of joy here. I mean, we need to see some smiles. I got it. <laughs> uh, but I want to decree over you that this will be a joyful, yes, merry Christmas. And I Christmas. decree over all of you joy, merriment, and peace right now. Especially this week. May the Lord's peace and Thank his you, joy Lord. come upon you in a special way. Thank you, Lord. And this week, as you draw near to Jesus... He is going to draw near to you and he's going to do and say to you things you have never yet experienced yes. in your life. Yes. This week, you are going to sense his presence, his voice, his love and his joy like you have never experienced up till now in your life. Get ready expect it the god of hope is at your door the god of hope is here the god of expectation is there with you and he wants you to know you can expect to draw and hear him like never before amen and he is ready to bring forth into your life things and secrets yep. about you that you know not of that he's about to reveal. So be ready. He's going to speak and reveal secrets to you. And as this time begins to become his friend and drawing near this will be the key Amen. to the other facets of your life that are yes. about to come yes. in the upcoming year. Yes. Draw near before the new year. That's the word I'm hearing. And as you draw near, you'll see great and great 
mighty things happen. Call on me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't even know about. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Sarah. The Lord gave me a scripture um, for your, for the prophetic word the Lord gave you. Isaiah 45, verse three. Yeah. I will give you the treasures of darkness. Um, and in this case, it was referring to the Egyptian booty and the trade routes, strategies, um, and hidden riches of secret places. Amen. That you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by name, and the God of Israel, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you. And then says something else, but I have named you. And then he says, and I, I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you. And then it says, though you have not known me. But what the Lord is saying in all of this is he is drawing us in this time into depths of the secret place. He's going to reveal hidden treasures in all facets of life, mm -hmm. relational, financial, social, whatever you know, whatever needs to ha happen, but it's, it's found in the secret place because who's found in the secret place, our father. And in that, in that he's calling us by name, each and every one of you, he's calling John, Kiana, Teddy, Fran, Ethel. I can't see the rest of the screen, but he's calling each and every one of you individually by name to come in so that you may know him Amen. in greater measure. That's right. Hallelujah. So get ready this week, folks. God's moving greatly. Secret places. Secret place. Amen. Have a great week. We love you. May the you. Lord we bless you, you. Keep you. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be rich in you. And as you abide in him, get ready for all that he has for you this week. Have a great day. Great week. Bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.